The Gobi Desert is a vast and dry region in China and Mongolia. It's known for sand dunes, mountains, and rare animals like snow leopards and Bactrian camels. In one part, called Gobi Gurvansaikan National Park, the sand dunes, called Kongarin Ls, can even make singing sounds when the wind blows. Well, now China's got some big surprises up its sleeve for this desert. They're building something really crazy right in those singing sand dunes. See, in the past, the Gobi Desert gave China some real headaches. Wild weather brought these sandstorms that were like sneezy storms of sand. They caused chaos, messing up farmlands, and even hiding villages under entire mountains of sand. People had to pack up and leave their homes. But now, the Chinese have a plan to use these sand dunes for something huge. They want to host China's latest nuclear project there. This project could even totally change the future of China and even our planet. So stay tuned till the end of the video as today we will uncover what China is up to and how its actions could have consequences for other countries. But before we move forward, we'd like to thank you for watching and ask you subscribe to our channel if you like our video. China is going to launch something called a thorium reactor. It's like a big step forward in their advanced nuclear technology journey. Thorium might be new to some people, but it's quite useful for making energy. It's safer and makes less waste than uranium, which is what they use in normal nuclear power plants. Plus, it works great in dry places like the Gobi Desert. China has a bunch of thorium more than almost anywhere in the world. Untapping this resource means that they'll be the first country to use thorium on a big scale. And this could give them enough energy to power their whole country for 20,000 years. So China isn't the first country to try out thorium. Actually, it was the United States that was when they started testing something called molten salt reactors with thorium back in the 1960s. However, as sad as it is, the U.S. did not keep going because they didn't have enough money from their government to keep the program running. At that time, they were busy with the space race against the Soviet Union. So most of their resources, time, and budget all were going to NASA for space stuff. Interestingly, India has the world's biggest stash of thorium. They've been wanting to build a nuclear power plant with thorium since the 1980s. Unfortunately, they instead have faced a couple of challenges up until this point. They didn't have all the technical know-how and again, they didn't get enough money from their government to push the project forward. This is why China's government in specific has a pretty big advantage over other countries. You see, they have a one-party system, which means they can make decisions faster. So when they want to invest in and build important things like this thorium project, they don't have to deal with much paperwork and very little delay. They just make a clear decision and take action right away to get the results that they desire. Let's show you a more clear, factual example. In 2018, India decided to build their first high-speed rail project just like China did previously. But after five years of work, they've only completed 30% of the project. It's taking longer than the country expected, and the cost has now gone up. They now think they won't be done until 2028, which is 10 years after they started initially. Now let's compare that with China's high-speed rail project. When China decided to build theirs, it only took them three years to finish the entire thing. A big reason for their success was the clear direction from the government. They knew what they wanted, and they wanted to make it happen soon. Coming back to the Chinese thorium reactor project and the environmental impact, it is worth noting that China's government sent in some environmental experts for the study and these experts spent over two entire years checking and testing the reactor to make sure it's as safe as possible. Once they knew everything was safe and sound, China's nuclear division then gave them a special permit to run the thorium reactor. They got this permit on June 7th, and now they can run the reactor for the next 10 years. So what makes China's new thorium reactor so special? Well, it's not like those regular nuclear power plants that need lots of water for cooling. This new reactor can obviously work without much water, which is why they built it in the dry Gobi Desert. And here's something else that's pretty important for those who are concerned about China's nuclear plans. This technology is completely safe. Unlike uranium, thorium cannot be used to make nuclear weapons. This is because thorium is not volatile or dangerous by itself, also unlike uranium. 
All of this is part of China's big plan to become carbon neutral by 2060. They are already leading the world in renewable energy, and now they want to combine these new salt reactors with their existing wind and solar plants. This way, they can give out electricity to their humongous population without harming the environment. But wait, there's something else special about this new reactor. It can use more than just thorium. It can also burn something called U-238, which is the waste from regular nuclear water reactors. Without getting too technical, it means China can turn this existing nuclear waste from uranium reactors into clean and carbon neutral energy. This new reactor has so much potential. It could totally change the game and transform China's energy needs for the future and other countries as well. Just look at all the things China is already doing. They built the most advanced 5G network and are already working on 6G technology. Their high-speed rail network is top-notch. And did you know they produce almost all of the silicone for solar panels worldwide? Even for electric vehicles, no other country's technology matches China's for making the batteries. And speaking of electric vehicles, even the Ford chairman admitted that the U.S. cannot compete with China on EVs. The U.S. is facing challenges because its energy system isn't very well connected. This means they can't use wind and solar energy together to reduce their carbon footprint. China is doing something really smart. They have two grids, one in the north and one in the south, and they connected them both together in 2005. Then in 2011, they linked every province in China into one big system. This is a huge advantage. With this connected grid, China can be the top producer of renewable energy. They use a mix of wind, solar, nuclear, and now thorium to fuel their energy needs. In the past 16 months, we learned how vital energy is for our global economy. With Russia's invasion of Ukraine, European countries faced a big energy crisis. They tried to reduce their reliance on Russian gas, but many still ended up buying it through other countries at much higher prices. So it seems like China is taking the lead in nuclear development, and in the future, they could work with both developing and developed nations like the UK and France. Why those two countries? Well, the UK and France both want to use more nuclear energy to reduce their carbon footprint. The British government plans to triple their nuclear capacity by 2050 to power a quarter of their country's needs. France, on the other hand, already gets about 70% of their energy from nuclear sources. Their president, Macron, is even looking into building more nuclear reactors. This clearly shows that the Western countries want to use nuclear energy, but they've fallen behind in technology, equipment, and building actual infrastructure. In the last few years, almost all nuclear reactors under construction are designed by Russia or China. China might be sorta of new to nuclear power since 1991, but in just 30 years, they've become a huge player in the industry. Well, it looks like that new thorium reactor in the Gobi Desert will be a real game changer for China. And if Western countries are wise, they'll put aside their differences and work with China on energy solutions. China's government is super committed to making this a top priority, and they usually get things done when they're serious about it. That is it for today's video, and now we invite you to share your thoughts in the comments below. Please do subscribe to the channel if you like our content. We'll catch you in the next one. Thank you so much, and goodbye.